So, the household is sleeping. It is midnight 30, actually. Midnight 30. Just came downstairs. Time to get to work. I just busted out a reel because, like, when I'm needing to motivate myself, I give myself a laugh, make it real, they're fun, post it on the gram. Um, and now I'm about to start uploading books to whatnot for the One Not Wednesday sale. And then I need to start grading the books for the charity sale, um, for Smile Train, our memorial um, fundraiser in honor of our friend, Dusty. So I have been putting off grading those books. Um, I pulled books from the shop and um, our personal collection from books that I know that he loves. Um, I even like went back to his um, Instagram page to verify some of the stuff that he likes. So it's going to be hard. I've been putting off getting these books, but I know that we definitely want the, um, the auction to go as best as possible. So that means, of course, it's comics. Got to have that condition ready. So you can't just throw these books up. I gotta, I gotta go through them and uh, grade them, so it's gonna be hard. I waited, I definitely waited to the last second. Um, it was just really hard. It was really hard putting the books together. So, um, gonna start going through those tonight, and yeah, that's gonna be my night. Keynoting, and yeah. I get questions and I've had a couple of haters like bring up like it's annoying how I can on everything you know what I'm just gonna say that for to the to the haters y'all rude bye but to those who are genuinely curious why do we keto everything is because there's just so much about the books especially when you hit like those older ones silver and bronze age those artists are amazing. We have a lot of people that like, this is a great example. We have a lot of new collectors that come to our Silver and Bronze Age um, sales and they fall in love with Jack Kirby or John Romita Sr. or Stranko and they don't necessarily know how to identify their books. They just know like this, I love this artist. I want their work. And so, Danielle and I always make sure that we address um, those things about those books because for a new someone that may be new to Jack Kirby, like for me, I feel like I can identify a Jack Kirby cover all day, every day. But Jack Kirby rarely did interior work, but he did do some interior work and he actually wrote a couple stories like Amazing Adventures 1 just if they got the top of my head and you know where like if he's done not the cover but he's done some interior or if he did something that wasn't on the cover but you did the story for it or the interior work you're not just going to know that by looking at the cover of the book um it's another example of, like I've been collecting for a while but and I love Matt Baker like I love collecting his stuff and I love collecting his stuff in the wild but his work is really hard to find. He did a lot of interior work. A lot of interior work. And I collect the books that he did interior work on. But I can't just, like, I can't just go in the wild and, like, look at a book and be like, oh, I can feel it. Oh, Jack, Matt Baker, I know it. He did the work in this book. I'm not, I can't just walk up to a book that Matt Baker did interior work on and just know unless, like, I've memorized some of the numbers that I'm looking for, but that's why we keynote. I could rant. I'm not going to rant, but that's my TED Talk on that. Um, so we love, a, like, talking about the books, plus it gives us something to talk about, y'all, like... My day's kind of boring. I mom and do homeschool. Like for me, it's a blast and it's fun. But for y'all at the sale, y'all are there for the comics. 
y'all there for the books. I know you're there to hang out and chit chat, but I love being able to have a conversation about comic books. It's absolutely impossible to know all the books in the shop upstairs. There's 40,000 books. Have I read them all? No. Am I gonna read them all? No. I'm gonna go through them all, and I'm gonna go through every single one before they leave this house. This is something that no one talked about. All right, I did not plan on ranting when I opened up this camera, but it's happening right now. This is something that no one talks about, but people judge each other for it so harshly. You don't read everything that you collect. I'm not saying that's 100% true for everybody. You don't read everything you have. And no one talks about it, but people judge each other for it. And I think it needs to stop. Okay. That's it. All right, I'm going to my fridge. Energy drink time. All right, I drink Celsius. This stuff makes me freaking wired, all right? this right? I'm not sponsored by them. I don't know them. I buy their stuff from Food Lion. All right, because it's gluten-free, I have celiac disease, holla, but it's also non-GMO. It's kosher, has zero sugar, certified vegan, no fructose, corn syrup, no aspartame, no preservatives, no color, blah, blah, blah. This stuff is so good. It's like a healthy energy drink. Essential energy accelerates metabolism and burns body fat. Well, that's great. I need it for the energy part. So I always get asked what I drink in my streams in a wine glass and I drink these. I'm feeling like watermelon. I'm feeling like watermelon. All right, let me get some books. Y'all are here for the books. I'm seven minutes into this video, ranting and talking about nothing. All right, let's get some books. All right, we got tape. Scissors, graded comics, guys. I gotta tape some stuff, so. All right. Moon Knight, let's talk about it. The Moon Knight trailer dropped yesterday. Oh, there's so many Easter eggs in it, so I watched it. Tony and I watched it, had our first thoughts on it, we made a video. And then we went back, watched it again, watched it again, picked apart some Easter eggs, watched it again. I'm a little upset because I am now thinking that Moon Knight wasn't kicking werewolves, but I really wanted to see Werewolf by Night. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the monsters. I'm ready for the horror. I'm ready for all that. Now, don't get it twisted. I do really think that they're still going to bring in all of that stuff. I just don't know if that was werewolf that he was, like, beating up in the video, in the trailer. However, I did see that, um, oh my gosh, I'm so happy about it. I did see the Ghost Rider sticker, whatever it was, in the elevator. It was a Ghost Rider skull and flames in the elevator. I did see that. I did see Conchu, which I mean, he, like, I told, I told Tony, he didn't think that Conchu was going to be in it because I didn't think that they would bring in a character that just needed so much detail. And he also felt like he would be, like, unnecessary to see visually. I felt like they were going to bring in Conchu. Rather, it was, like, actually Conchu in the flesh or Conchu in... Um, in his brain, I'm going to flip these so you guys can see what these books are that are going up. Um, so you guys can see books too. But I did notice Conchu the next time that I watched the trailer, which was exciting. The first time I watched it on such a little screen. Um, but I was super excited about that. I love all the Easter eggs they had, um, relating to, like, stuff that happened in the comic books. <sighs> what else was super cool? I saw that a package behind his back when he was driving the truck said Von Doom. Or it said Von and then you saw the V. But obviously it's got to be Victor Von Doom. I 
I'm um, excited for Doom, period. I think Doom is one of the badass villains in Marvel. In the Silver and Bronze Age, he stretches across freaking, it seems like, all the storylines. Like, Doom is everywhere. He's in it. He's a part of it all. All the crap. He's, it just seems like he's behind the scenes somewhere, behind the, like, just in it. But I'm like, dang. Like, they've got to be bringing in Dracula at some point because of the Darkhold. You know, you get the Darkhold. It kind of has to go hand in hand unless they change the storyline around because, like, the Darkhold is, it belongs to Dracula and vampires. It's theirs. Like, they need it. So, I just feel like Dracula's, like, in this MCU somewhere, right? But then they've got King. And if they're bringing Doom in, I feel like that's a lot at once. I mean, it's Marvel. Disney Plus, like, I know they can pull it off and make it a banger. I'm just a little, I'm just like, man, how are they going to cram it all, you know? And they just brought in Kingpin. Anyways. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the show. I'm excited to see how it goes. Uh, I think it's going to be my favorite. My phone decided to run out of space. Um, I had to delete some things. It's gonna be my day. I really do. But anyways, enough about midnight. I know that we've officially on Instagram seen every single Moon Knight comic book in all time of all time on Instagram. Because of course, it's like every time a show comes out or like a movie comes out, it's like it's like a show and tell assignment was put up. You know what I mean? And the theme is whatever just happened, right? So. Anyways, I always love that. It just makes the community feel so close when everyone's sharing like their favorite covers and such of the characters that are coming out. Um, and to answer a question I actually got today on the gram, someone asked me, do I feel like they should be buying Moon Knight right now? And I'm like, well, if you're buying it to read, this is my answer to that. If you want to read it, I would try to look digitally or see if you can find the volumes. Now, Marvel didn't go crazy on Moon Knight. They didn't print a bunch of storylines and do a bunch of stuff. His stuff is dope, but there's not a lot of it. Um, the Bill Sienkiewicz stuff, it's hard to find. And it's hard to buy because that whole freaking run is brilliant. Bill Sienkiewicz and himself is a collectible. I mean, anything he's touched is a collectible, is sought after. And then you've got Moon Knight attached to it. Um, and, you know, his more modern stuff, his variants are freaking killer. Like, Moon Knight, I wouldn't, like, if you're looking to read it, I wouldn't go searching, buying that stuff, individual issues. I would look digitally, and if you don't like digital, go get um, get the volume, get the get the set in volumes or the omnis or condom condependium. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, that's where I would look. Like if you're looking to read. Now, if you're looking to collect, if it's for your collection, I would say. Unless you have an, a wild find, right? I would look in the wild. You might get get good deals on on boosts that get really good deals. Um, your local shops, you know what I mean. You might get a really good deal there. I would say, if you're looking to collect Moon Knight, I honestly haven't looked at prices of the Moon Knight books. To be 100% honest. Most of the Moon Knight books, we don't get Moon Knight books in collections, period. Like, rarely ever. Like, we just got, like, six Moon Knight books in a collection recently. And there's, like, one left. And it's going up. And then we have, like, a couple rando ones. Um, like, these ones you just saw. They think there's a Liefeld one. Oh, here's one I'm about to tape right now. This is the one I'm talking about. And then the other ones I'll show you are... Oh, they're not left. No, they're not Liefeld. There's another Liefeld book, but that wasn't it. My bad. 
Um, what was I saying? Yeah, we just don't have him in the shop. We have him in our in the PC. But I've been collecting Moon Knight for a hot minute. Like he was one of the first characters I actually collected when I first got into comics. Like I shared my hip hop variant, the schizophrenia one, um, of Moon Knight. That book is like over a hundred dollars now, which is freaking nuts. But like I got that for like five dollars, I think, when I first got it. But I, like I was saying, I don't know the values of Moon Knight right now. I haven't really researched. I've seen around that the Moon Knight, the Sakanchi book, number two, has gotten crazy. But without knowing how much the books are going for, I would say now is not the, the time to collect it all. Not everyone's going to like me saying that out loud. Not everyone's going to like my thoughts on that. But if it's going in your collection and it's something that you're going to be holding on to for a long time, you might save a several hundred dollars when the next trailer of something else comes out. Like, we should be looking at a She-Hulk and what else is coming out kind of soon? Black Panther. She-Hulk, Black Panther, when a trailer comes out of that stuff, Moon Knight, my, I could be wrong, could be wrong, please don't take my word for gold, but like, um, you could save some money there if you wait. Moon Knight's really freaking hot right now, and his books are scarce. So, but, you know, Moon Knight could also be, like, the next big, 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 big thing, and then I'd be wrong, and then his books go to the moon, and stay to the moon, and never come back down for, like, a freaking decade. Just being a little less dramatic, but that's why I'm like, don't take my word for gold, but I'd say, like, right after a trailer drops, one that was freaking amazing, might not be the time... To go buying because you might spend too much. So I did want to answer that because I got asked that today. So like I said, it depends. Now if you're reading it, like I said, volumes, um, condominiums, whatever. I can't say that word for beans. Those are like a really good way to go. Um, yeah. Alright, these are the books for Wednesday. Also, let me take you guys over here. Look what else is up. That's going to be up on Wednesday. Batman Adventures 12 and I'm going to Alright, so all the books I just went through and taped. Those are for Wednesday, which I guess is today. Got to upload them, keynote them and such. Alright, so, well you guys basically just saw them. Um, but yeah, the reason I don't really need to keep up with the values on books anymore is because we did the whatnot auctions, $1 Starfit, and that has definitely saved me a lot of time. I used to do the bin sales on Instagram, man, that was rough. Like, it's definitely worth it, you know what I mean? But it is hard, like... You've got to use like all the resources to get the right values um, because what we did and what we do when we do um, buy it now is like we haven't done a buy it now auction on Instagram. I know Danielle and I are going to be doing something um, sooner rather than later but basically what we do is we value the book based on recent sale averages and then we just take offers from there. You know what I mean? So some books obviously have a lot more room than others depending on what collection they came from in the shop but um, we just price them at the averages fair market value and take offers from there but with whatnot like one dollar start bid on everything don't really need to know the numbers on every single book even the x-men 366 i mean obviously i know x-men 266 in that tie grade I know that book is expensive. I do know that. Do I know the fair market value on it? No. But I'll tell you what. 
the room is going to decide the price on that book. Someone's going to get a deal on it. And I'm done with it. Okay. I need to work on that whole Cardi B thing. Danielle does it really good. It makes me laugh. All right. Time to upload. And then I'm going to go through the books for Destiny's charity auction. All right. So I'm uploading books on whatnot. Got my stack, got my tablet over here, and then I'm actually watching um, Davis Ryder. He has 395 in his stream tonight. Um, his big follower giveaway, and then there's so many people in the chat that he's just still giving away books. He is such a sweetheart. He is such a nice guy. Um, he does shows every Tuesday night. You can find him as Davis Ryder, like legit. Like Davis Ryder. Search on whatnot, find him. Super sweet guy. So nice. Great seller. Anyways, got two books in so far. Tablet's dying. So I'm going to jump into his stream. Use my phone to upload. Um... Uh, basically, what it looks like is, so far, got these two, actually, let me flip. Alright, so here it is. I click the plus sign, quick add, I could do photos, but I'm not going to, I'd be here all night. Sorry guys, call it being lazy or call it being almost 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Your choice. So, product name, gonna add no, the book name there. 400. Description, which will be the grade. One is usually the quality, and then the shipping and confirm, and I'm gonna do that until that stack is gone. All right, so I got all the books uploaded in to whatnot. I actually need to pick a couple more because I pulled a couple out. Sometimes if I feel like I pulled too much of a series, I will, um, so I'm gonna bore people. Like if we're on for an hour, I don't want to have like ten Spider Man. I don't know. Anyways, um, I pulled a couple. Plus I felt like um, well the ones I pulled was like like we already have a couple McFarlane Spideys going up. So I was like, well I don't want to like drown it out. Um, and then the books that I pull out, like if I ever pull a book out of sale, by the way, like it's something that's not already in the preview. Now if it's in the preview, it's staying there, and I'm gonna figure it out. Um, but I pulled this out because I feel like this needs to be paired with something else, um, like a duo. Like, I feel like this would be, like, a good book that would be a nice duo. Same with this one. Um, I want to do, I want to pair this up. I have, like, Red Sonia too, so I want to pair this up. Um, let's see what else I pull out. Oh, this one I'm going to pull back in. I need to get Marvel Presents number one. So I put Marvel Presents number two. Probably my mindset was I saw this. And I was like, oh, I need to get this in there. It would be super dope. And then I didn't grab number one. Sometimes I like do these things to remind myself. Whatever, there's a lot of behind it. So I pulled this aside, not out of the sale, but aside. This is in the preview, so I pulled this aside because I need to grab number one. So Marvel Presents number one. I'm going to put it with number two. That'll be dope. So, all right. I need to get a couple more books. I'm actually not going to. It's almost 3 right now. It's almost 3 a.m. It's on the TV right now. Oh, I was like, my tree is like having a shade on it. It looks really weird, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh my gosh. Or is it the setting on my tree? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Squirrel. Alright, so anyways, distracted. I decided against grading um, and going through the books for the charity auction. Um, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I have a lot of time on my hands tomorrow night. So our auction isn't actually till 10 Smalls, our little person, um, he usually falls asleep around 7. Um, he's getting closer to 6, so we um, changed his bedtime from 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. to 6.30 and moving towards having him with a 7 o'clock bedtime. It's getting to be a big boy. Um, so anyways, 
all this stuff is done for whatnot on Wednesday, then I have all that time um, to go through books and grade them for the charity auction for Dusty. I'd rather be with Tony when I do that. Um, I don't know. I'm an emotional being as you get to know me. So I was about to go get the books and start grading them, but then just thinking about going upstairs to grab them and to start them just had me a hot mess. So it's almost free anyways. I should go to bed. I have school in the morning, every morning except for the weekend. Homeschooling mama. So yeah, tomorrow we start coding. So that's going to be fun though. He got a coding robot from Santa because Santa's really excited to um, have him learn. So it's pretty cool. It's like a toy, but it's also like a learning thing. So we'll see. I never learned coding in school like they have to learn coding in school. He's in kindergarten. And they, they do coding. It's crazy. Anyways, it's dope because obviously he's going to need it. When he's older. I can't think about that stuff. Anyways, guys, I'm going down the freaking... I am, like, falling down the mom slope right now, which means I need to go. I'm, be I'm starting to be boring. Anyways. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good day. Let me know what you liked. Um, like keep, like, please let me know what you like about the vlogs, what you would like to see more of. Um, I personally feel like I'm a little bit boring, but I get a lot of requests to do like the vlogs and like, I think they're a lot of fun, but I want to make sure I'm like showing you guys what you want. Um, talking about like the different areas of like what I do with skeleton key and stuff like that you guys want to hear about learn about see stuff like that anything you guys want to see um how it works let me know and anyways like subscribe if you like the video all that good stuff i'll catch you guys later i'm gonna get ready for bed and yeah bye guys so let's look at some books we got Jane Foster Thor, Mighty Thor 1. You guys, I am so excited for Love and Thunder. Um, so Wednesday night is like, so if I haven't told you yet, let's flip. Let's. All right, so if I haven't explained this already, Wednesday night show, um, we get a lot of requests for stuff that's going on on the DCU, MCU, spec stuff. So I try to pull stuff that's kind of like relevant as to like super dope artists that people are requesting or um stuff that's relevant on tv All right keep that in mind as you're looking at these because that is what goes on in my brain as i'm going through a bazillion comics for this particular sale all right you got the third blue beetle first appearance first cover dc stuff all right you've got the future ghost writer this one has another one with it i need to pair it together it's like issue 14 that goes with it um, we got the first full appearance of the Midnight Suns. You've got 266. CGC says it is the first full appearance of Gambit. We can all cry about it. Straight from the slab. Are they here team annual 14 like me or not? Um, but hey, let me tell you guys something. You will not unsee this. Gambit's thong. Like, hello. Alright, you can't unsee that now. Alright, we got Clint as Ronin. The second Ronin. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I love this one. Electra. Alright, first glow in the dark comic. But actually, it's freaking dope. Um, we've got the origin of Echo in this issue. David Max story, interior, and cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. Her origin starts in 51, but um, it continues here. We've got the first appearance of Grey the Wanderer, first appearance of Destroyer Duck, and Jack Kirby, and oh boy, I can't remember the other guy's name, um, created this together as like a protest thing. 
All right, we've got the first appearance of Team Big Hero 6 and um, the two issues behind it to follow. Guys, I have to tell you something. I do not check values on books before I put them in the sale. I just put them in there and I'm like, let's have fun, right? Well, I actually really like Big Hero 6 because I loved the movie um, when I was little and I can't believe it. These, this is over $150. I couldn't believe it. Anyways, someone's going to get a deal on it because these are super niche. I already put it in the thing. Um, stuff like this is so, so niche. So if it's like ridiculously niche and expensive, I'll find like FMV on it, bring it down to a, like a good price. I take offers from there too. I'll put it on the website type of thing. Um, but this is super niche. So I think it's going to go for a really good deal. I think someone's going to take it with a burglary mask on. That's <laughs> what Danielle and I say. But that's going to be $1 start pin. That's just my prediction on that. Um, Mace Windu, number one. Sleepwalker one. First appearance of Sleepwalker in a light ball. Amazing Spider Girl. So we also try to make sure that, like, like we have Batgirl... Um, bat, jeez, crow, I need to go to bed. We have, like, X-Men 266, and we have, um, you know, Batman Adventures, and some of these books are a little pricier in there. What we try to do is we really try to grab books, too, um, of variety of prices, because we want everyone to be able to participate in finding something that they love without spending, like, a billion dollars. So this one, these two are like a really nice grab. Dope cover and story. Anyways, this is a black and white. Stunning first issue. Alright, then we have Maya Lopez as Ronan. Okay, Echo for super appearance of the champions. This is the um vintage variant of nice house on like number one it's a really really good read like this one is a freaking dope read and it's super eerie super creepy super super creepy actually but it's good um patrick gleason fine arts variant this is black panther 25 i believe all right, then these two are going up together. Mark Spector, Moon Knight, 20 and 21, guest starring The Punisher and Spidey. We had a request for some Mark Spector, so we got these two dope covers. They're not keys, but they're cool. Um, high grade and you stand. So that's awesome. This is the first appearance of that crazy guy that has a friggin' rat army. Anyways, it's Moon Knight 15, super incredible Frank Miller cover. I love how his cape is a crescent moon. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. Um, and it has Bill Sankovich interior. It's gorgeous on the inside. This is a book I was telling you went with the other um, First Appearance of Spirit of Vengeance feature ghostwriter. So that's a duo. This actually goes with the book that I showed you guys way earlier. This is Morbius number one. First in the solo series, it's a new stand, which is super dope. Super excited about the movie. We've had a lot of requests for this particular book, so put it in. Anya, first solo series, it's number one. Gorgeous book. Some more Mark Spector, but this is a Liefeld. We always, um, it's always funny, whenever we do a Liefeld book, every, there's always someone that's like, let me see the feet. Well, you will be disappointed. They are, well, they're not completely hidden. They're half hidden. No, it's a dope cover, for real, though. And Wolverine does not appear in this comic. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> I love it. All right, then we've got McFarlane. Spider-Man 2. Croc. Spidey, some dope nostalgia, and Hala, freaking Eric Larson, is a beast. Spider-Man 18, Ghost Rider Spidey, newsstand, incredible condition, but, oh, so good. 
Anyways, those are the books. Um, you can throw Batman Adventures is cool. Um, and yeah. What do you think of that? What do you think of that stack? How do you think I did? Kind of like cherry picking. I love cherry picking the shop. It's so fun. Um, putting sales together. So what do you guys think of the stack? Of books it's a really good variety our customers and our community love the variety sales so like even our silver bronze age like yeah it's like really um, anything that's like sub 1984 but is seriously like we try to focus on the 60s and the 70s um, like early 70s but even though it's like a very compact um, set of years there is a really good variety of characters and stuff. So we like really try to like do that. Um, so there's something in there for everyone because the nice thing about whatnot is we have a lot of people. I would say at least half or more of our community that hops in there is there to hang out and chit chat, have a drink, talk about comics, talk about the book that's up. Um, I love like when everyone pops in the story, it's like, oh my gosh, I remember when I bought that at the rack, and, or my mom used to take me to the shop, and I used to get those as, like, my treat every week for doing good in school, like, so many stories get shared, and I love it, um, so most of our audience in there is there to hang out, and I love that, um, and anyways, like I said, it's bedtime, it's bedtime, it's bedtime. See you later. Thanks for watching.